Hey Green, hey, we're continuing on with biology. We're gonna talk about microscopes and cells. Now, microscopes is a tough topic for us to cover virtually uh, because normally you would actually just kind of play around with the microscope and we would do a lab. Uh, it would be fantastic, but we can't do that in the environment we're in. So instead, what we're going to be doing is doing a virtual lab, watching a video or two. It's gonna be good, just different. So uh, we're going to learn today about the parts of a microscope, how to use a microscope, that sort of thing. Hopefully you'll enjoy it. So to get into it, uh, first of all, why do we even need microscopes? Well, the fact is the human eye is kind of bad at seeing really small things. We can't see stuff that is less than 0.1 of a millimeter thick very well. So there are many, many, many things that are way too small for us to see with the naked, unaided eye. So basically, microscopes allow us to see this whole microscopic world that we otherwise would not be able to get a view of. Uh, and going through a bit of the history of the microscope, the, the first guy that we really should credit with microscope development actually has a very similar last name to me. He was uh, Dutch and he was actually a um, linen merchant. So he, he sold a bunch of like cloths and stuff and would go around as a traveling salesman uh, selling cloths. But he had this hobby of making microscopes that he would then use to look at his linens and see how wonderful his linens were, his cloth. Uh, so he made these microscopes that were just absolutely incredible and they magnified, it says up here up to 300 times. I've seen other places say up to 500 times, which is just absolutely incredible that he could do this. And he actually noticed that were, there were all of these like little living organisms that he found that couldn't be seen with the naked eye. He called them animolecules. Um, which was kind of neat because uh, like animals and then molecules being very, very tiny. So animolecules. Um, and yeah, so he actually observed small single celled organisms. And this was the beginning of actually understanding that we have living things that are incredibly tiny that we can't see with the naked eye. Things like, uh, you know, amoebas and bacteria and that sort of thing. Robert Hooke is the guy who's actually responsible for the term cell. He experimented with uh, microscopes as well. And one thing he did is he took a look at cork. And when he looked at cork, he saw that there were all these little like uh, boxes or spots or whatever. And they reminded him of little rooms in a monastery that the monks would stay in, which I guess were called like cellulae or cells. Um, so he actually named it cells after that because we reminded him of these little tiny rooms, kind of like, how you hear about jail cells, the same idea. Uh, so that's where the word cell came from, is from Robert Hooke observing cork and it basically reminding him of little tiny rooms. In 1839, Schleiden, Schwann, and later uh, Robert Virchow used microscopes to further study cells. Uh, their ideas formed the basis for cell theory, including the following two points that are very important. Number one, all living things are made up of cells, right? All living things are comprised of one or more cells. Um, another thing is that cell is the uh, smallest functional unit of life, or another way of saying that. Cells are the basic units of structure and function in all organisms. Uh, so it's the most basic unit of actually, you know, living things. Now, what you need to know from these people, because right now I just threw some names at you and some dates. You don't have to know the dates. You don't. It doesn't matter in 1839. Who cares, right? But what you should know is you should know that von Leeuwenhoek was the first one to come up with um, like these amazing single lens microscopes that can magnify up to 500 times, that he was the first one to see microorganisms, animolecules. So you should know that. Uh, you should know that Robert Hooke came up with the idea of cells from cork, named cells, that he also used microscopes. And then you should know Schleiden, Schwann, and Virchow, uh, basically that they uh, saw cells and came up with these uh, main kind of points about cell theory, that uh, cells are the smallest functional unit of life, and that all things are made up of cells, all living things. All right, so... Developments in technology have given us microscopes now that are light compound microscopes that can magnify up to 2,000 times. 
The ones that we normally use in schools are typically 400 times magnification is what they max out at, sometimes 500. Once we get above four or 500 times, we have to use this technique called oil immersion, which means you need to put oil on the slide in order to get the proper view. It has to do with refraction, which we're going to learn about later on in a different unit. We talk about light. So once we get to light and talk about refraction, hopefully I remember this moment and can bring it up again. Uh, but yeah, anyways, normally we're up to 400 times in the microscopes we uh, would normally use in the school. So let's say in grade 10, right, or grade 9, you end up in school again. Um, then you would you know, use a, a microscope that would probably go up to 400 times. Now, electron microscopes can go much, much further than that. This is a picture of an electron microscope, and it can actually magnify up to like 2 million times. And there's even, I think, crazier ones. There's different kinds of electron microscopes. There's scanning electron microscopes. There's tunneling electron microscopes. There's all these different types. It's amazing, actually. Microscope technology is fascinating. It's actually always getting better as well. Uh, but electron microscopes allow us to see incredibly amazing uh, small, teeny, teeny, tiny things. So like when we talk about, you know, the coronavirus, we actually would be able to see that with an electron microscope, but not with a light microscope. It's too tiny. Uh, here's a neat image. What do you think this is? Hmm. Turns out it's actually like a foot of a bug, um, a fly. So that's what it looks like under a electron microscope. Uh, this is a fun site. I'm gonna link it through the end puzzle. This allows you to try to guess what different things are based on images from microscopes, whether it's light microscopes or electron microscopes or whatever. It's kind of a fun little activity for you to try out um, and to see some really neat images. So give that a go. All right, so let's talk about the different parts of a microscope. And this is gonna be a little bit of a, a boring part of this. And I wish I actually had a microscope with me to show you, but I don't. Um, yeah, but anyways, to start off, we have the eyepiece, which is on the very top. This contains uh, what we call the ocular lens. The ocular lens is normally a 10 times lens. So what happens is that normally you look through this eyepiece. I mean, always you look through this eyepiece. And this magnifies this lens, the ocular lens, as well as one of the objective lenses. Those two lenses work together in order to give you the image you see, and they multiply. So if the ocular lens you're using is a 10 times lens, and then you're on the four times objective lens, so that means that lens multiplies by four times, then 10 times four is 40 times. So you're gonna see the image then at 40 times magnification. So that means you would see it 40 times bigger than you would see it from that distance with your naked eye, which is kind of neat. Um, but anyways, the ocular lens, normally 10 times power, and that's what you look into, the eyepiece. Uh, then we have the tube. The tube is uh, perfectly kind of lengthened in order for you to be able to see from this lens to this lens. So it's the perfect length in order to actually allow the light to travel through perfectly and get a good image. Uh, so it holds the eyepiece and the objective lenses at the proper working distance from each other. Course adjustment knob. Uh, can you see it on here? I feel like it's hiding. Oh, there, it's up here. Normally, um, on the ones you'll use, they're actually kind of down below. But the course knob is a larger knob. This makes big changes to either the height of the lenses or the height of the stage. Either one might change depending on the microscope, right? Um, but when you move the course adjustment knob, it makes big changes to how close the lens is to the thing you're looking at, which we're going to call the specimen. Okay, uh, so it's either going to move the lenses up and down or it's going to move the stage up and down in order for us to get the perfect length between the two. The fine adjustment knob is for fine adjustments. It makes small changes to the distance between the two. Now, when we actually have something in focus on high power, it is so close to the lens. There's going to be less than a millimeter in between the high power objective lens and the specimen itself. Okay, so we get very close to the sample here. Uh, the arm is on the back. This is actually where we grab the microscope. So when you hold the microscope, you grab it by the arm, and then you put a hand underneath on the base, and that's how you carry it around to make sure that it is not going to get hurt. You never grab it by the tube, by the eyepiece. That is bad. Don't grab it there. Uh, always grab it by the arm. Revolving nose piece, that's this portion right here. That 
is what allows us to select how magnified it's going to be. So on the revolving nose piece, we have our objective lenses, at least two, sometimes three, sometimes four. Yeah, and uh, that actually lets us select how magnified we're going to look at this image. Uh, so normal microscopes that you would use at, let's say, Crescent Heights would have four times, 10 times, and 40 times objective lenses. Uh, so again, this multiplies by the ocular lens. So if I'm low power, four times, it's 10 times four is 40. If I'm on medium power, which is a 10 times lens, then it's 10 times 10 is 100, okay, for magnification when I look through the medium power objective lens. And if I look through the high power objective lens, that's 40 times. So I'd have 10 times 40, which would give me 400 times um, magnification. Sometimes there's a fourth lens that's 50 times. That would be an oil immersion lens uh, or maybe even higher, right? Uh, but yeah, kind of neat. That's a revolving nose piece. We've already kind of talked about objective lenses. Those are different magnification, and that's how we change the magnifying power of the microscope by selecting which one we're going to use. The stage has stage clips and a stage opening. That's where we're putting our specimen or our slide to take a look at. Uh, the preparation of the specimen is so important. So we're gonna talk about later on things like preparing a wet mount slide. Um, and that sort of thing in order for us to actually look at stuff under the microscope. The condenser lens is kind of in the stage there itself, um, hard to see, uh, but what it does is it allows light to travel through the, uh, the stage and directs light onto the specimen itself. We have the iris diaphragm or diaphragm down there. That actually allows us to adjust how much light gets through. When you're looking at something through the microscope, there's kind of this weird mix of you want it to not be super bright, you want to be able to see things, but you want it dim enough that you can see structures and you have good contrast. So normally what you do is um, you kind of go bright and then you start dimming it until you actually just see the image itself start to get darker. Uh, and there's kind of this sweet spot where you can see the most contrast, you can see the most stuff, but it's not like super in your face washed out with light. And then light source will be some kind of a lamp or a light bulb underneath. Uh, sometimes there might be a mirror, but I've never seen one actually myself with a mirror. It's pretty not used now. It's pretty much just always a light bulb of some kind. I'll tell you, um, there was one year during final exams that I just spent like a couple of days fixing microscopes. It was fun. I had a great time just taking them apart trying to fix them up, putting them back together. It was good. Here's a bit of a fancier one. Uh, it shows you a few more things, right? So you've got like a different kind of stage clip. This actually, in order to move things around, you can use stage controls and it will actually move it forward, backward, side to side using that. Um, I have a iris diaphragm again and a condenser lens. Um, you can actually sometimes put filters into that diaphragm to get different images, like a polarizing filter. Got our nose piece, eye piece again, diopter adjustment. That would just be for a two lens one like, like we have here where both eyes go in. Um, so yeah, just a different thing, right? Again, we got a different type of microscope here. This is the one you're worried about though, this style here. Um, if you learn this diagram, which is what is in your notes and what things do, you're in good shape. So what I want you to get out of this, hopefully where we should be, is I could give you a diagram of a microscope and you could tell me what's what, and in very few words, what each thing does. That's what we're trying to get to at this point. So hey, let's try it out. Let's see what you can figure out from this diagram. Uh, what do you think structure 11 is? What, oh, it's the, the low power objective lens. What is structure? Eight. That would be the iris diaphragm, or it's a little bit unclear, it could be the condenser lens. What do you think number four is? I would say that's the fine adjustment knob. Okay, let's go through the procedure of how to use a microscope. This is gonna be dry. I'm gonna go through this, and then we're gonna go through like the summary of like, here's the basic steps without all the different details. Uh, so, now that you know the parts of a microscope, you are ready to begin using it. Carry your microscope to your work area. When carrying a microscope, hold it firmly by the arm and the base using both hands. 
Position the microscope at your work area with the arm toward you. If the microscope has an electric cord for the light source, make sure the cord for the light source, oh, make sure the cord is properly connected and plugged in. You know, that's interesting. I've always actually had the microscope the other way with the stage towards me. I like that better, um, but this is suggesting the opposite way. Maybe it's a user preference thing. I don't know. Use lens paper to clean the lenses and the light source or mirror. Do not touch the lenses with your fingers. Um, the lens paper is kind of like a tissue paper, not like a Kleenex, but it's more coarse. Uh, it's a very particular paper. You don't want to use just anything because it could scratch the lenses. Do not turn any knobs until you have read through the rest of the procedure. Okay. The microscope should always be left with the low power objective lens in position. Uh, that way there's a max space between the stage and the lenses. If, if it is not, rotate the revolving nose piece until the low power objective lens clicks into place. Looking from the side, use the course adjustment knob to lower the objective lens until it is about one centimeter above the stage. Look through the eyepiece ocular lens and adjust the diaphragm until the view is as bright as you can get it. Prepare, uh, place a prepared slide on the stage. Make sure the sample object to be viewed is centered over the opening. Look through the eyepiece and slowly turn the course adjustment knob until the sample is in focus. Use the fine adjustment knob to sharpen the focus. Adjust the diaphragm to a setting that shows the most detail. While looking through the eyepiece, move the slide a little to the left. Observe in which direction the image moves. Move the slide a little away from you and then up towards you. Observe what happens to the image. These are lab directions more than actually using the microscope at this point. Find a part of the sample that interests you, and in your notebook, sketch what you see. Can't do that, can't do that, can't do that, can't do that. All right, anyways, uh, let's go to kind of the summary of how to use a microscope, which I think is going to be better. And it's important that you do this in the right order in order to be able to get a really magnified good image. So, of course, you start by placing the slider, the specimen, under the stage clips in a way where the opening, the stage opening, is, uh, you know, right where you're looking, right? So whatever you want to look at, it should be over the stage opening or the condenser lens. Start on the low power objective and focus using the coarse focus knob until you can see um, the thing, right? And then from there, use the fine focus knob to get a good image. After you've done that, you never touch the coarse focus again. You're done with it. You're only using fine focus. Switch the objective um, lens with the revolving nose piece to medium power. Use your fine focus, get it, you know, again uh, in focus. Once you've done the fine focus knob, gotten in focus, then you go to high power, fine focus knob till you have it in focus, and then you're good. Use the iris diaphragm to actually uh, adjust the light until again, you're getting just a bit of contrast. So it's bright, but it starts to dim just a bit, and then you can see the most detail at that point. Now, one term that we need to know and talk about is field of view. Field of view is actually the diameter from one side to the other side of what you're looking at under the microscope. So it is the length from here to here. You can actually see field of view using a microscope by just placing a ruler underneath it and looking at a see-through ruler. And then you can tell by looking at the ruler itself how much you can see. So if you look at the ruler and you can see like one millimeter, two millimeters, then you know the field of view is two millimeters, right? So it's just how um, how wide you're actually seeing on that image. Uh, now, here's an interesting question. As magnif magnification increases, I can say that word, as magnification increases, what happens to field of view? Well, it gets smaller, right? So as I get more and more zoomed in to the image, I magnify more and more, I'm actually seeing less in terms of width, right? It's like when I'm zooming in on Google Earth, right, where I have like the whole world to start off and then I zoom in and I zoom in and I zoom in. Am I seeing more detail? Yes, but I'm looking crosswise at a smaller area, right? So in the same way as I zoom in, as I magnify a sample by going to higher and higher objective lenses, what's happening is I'm actually seeing a smaller field of view. Here's another diagram, okay, to take a look at and we've got our numbers here um, and here it is labeled, okay, so if you want, pause the video, take a look. Here are different labels, uh, different microscope diagrams to look at. Uh, and I think it's good to be familiar with more than one diagram to be able to relate all the different ones. All right, well, that's it. That's a microscope. We're gonna do some work over the next couple of days on this. Have a good rest of your day.